Hey you, you're super. Hey everyone, what's going on? Merch Hunter Ricky back, and let's just talk about Fabricant 100 Chapter 8. Already, I already told you guys my bias. If it's an action chapter, it's getting 100. And this chapter is an action chapter, it gets 100. And we don't need to harp on that further. Let's just delve right into why Fabricant 100 legitimately does not miss these first eight chapters have been phenomenal what we get at the end of the last chapter is the setup of a beautiful fight between ashibi fabricant 100 versus these two new people roxy the singer and her unnumbered fabricant because get it the fabricants don't have names they're just numbers so a couple just uh starter points for this fight i like that right away um, you got Fabricant kind of sizing up. F Fabricant 100 sizes up the singing Fabricant, and she's kind of like, um, I think that this Fabricant just has a specialized voice, and I'm going to assume since she's dodging so much, she is a single-digit Fabricant. Which, that lets us know that the first, you know, nine Fabricants are weak as hell. Even, that might even mean Fabricant number one is just a straight-up chump, you know? So... Moving to the fight now, I really like the way Inoshima captured little moments and movements. Um, I believe Fabricant 100 goes in for like a kick and she uses the, the railings to get like a little gymnast kick going. And he captures every single panel of the base movement for her body. And it's so well done. Like, bravo, Inoshima. Bravo. Great stuff. I mean... The, the way she he has Fabricant 100 darting after the singing Fabricant and like punching the ground and stuff, it just feels like you can tell that Fabricant is having to hold back Superman style because she is an anomaly, she's a beast, she's got super strength, she's got above average speed, maybe not super speed because we already saw Luca is as fast as her and same with this Fabricant, so most people can achieve that in this universe it seems, you know? What I enjoyed the most, and I didn't expect to enjoy it the most, is definitely Ashibi whooping out a random sword, right? I, and it's not like we knew what the premise of the play was, but I just like that my man is just packing a sword out of nowhere. And I think Roxy even, like, pulls... I don't I don't remember if she pulls one out, because I, I read the chapter a few days ago, and then I briefly went through it again before this video. Um, if she does, I'll edit it in the bottom. But I like that she grabbed him and was like, the show must go on. And he explains to her, like, hey, why are you doing this? This is so stupid. Your goal is dumb. And she's like, you know, he tells her, like, if a girl so beautiful as you could do good on stage. And she's talking about how she can't sing. And she says no matter how hard she works, she'll never be a good singer. So that's why she made this deal with the Fabricant. Um, what remains to be seen is what the Fabricant is getting out of this uh, outside of... Um, are they getting new body parts in the meantime? I think they briefly touched on that last chapter. I'll have to go back. Because if the people are just walking off the ceiling, splatting themselves, like, what body parts are you getting, you know? Furthermore, like, Roxy just looks older, right? Like, she has to be at least 16. So if she turns 18, like, she's about to lose her body to that fabricant soon. She should be begging to get saved by a Shivi at this point. But... That just goes to show what, what kind of twisted relationships we should be expecting here on out. Especially if Ashibi is going into the Mort safe. We don't know how long it's been since the Fabricants were created. I'm going to assume a year or two. It really feels like that, right? I'll go back and I'll check the first chapter to make sure that we don't have like a five years ago the Fabricants were created. So anything like that. Because I don't remember, but I also haven't gone back and read them in a while. But all in all... Great chapter. Don't want to take up too much of your time. Um, everything they showed in this chapter was good. The reasoning behind the wanting to work with the evil fabricant, it's flawed, and that's what makes a good villain, right? And Ashibi is going to have to learn. Again, I said it before. Do you draw the line at working with a fabricant, or do you draw the line at being a deranged human being? Or if you're a deranged human being working with a fabricant, how will you handle that, you know? Um, at what point will a Shibi be looked at as deranged for working with a Fabricant, you know? And, of course, let's talk about the ending of the chapter. I genuinely laughed. Like, I cackled ugly laughed. I'm telling you right now that when they were like, oh, the swords are really loud, I can't hear the play. 
I was like, yo, Fabricant 100 is about to scream. And then that beautiful panel of her, like, in, like, death mode, and she starts screaming, and then the second to last panel is, like, her, like, hanging up on top of that big chandelier screaming, and, you know, Ashibi's, like, kind of smiling at her. I'm so ready to see what happens after that. I'm, me personally, I'm going to assume the Fabricant, the evil one, that is, the singing one, will make a mad dash for the exit, at which point Ashibi and Fabricant might be or Fabricant 100 might be separated for a little bit, and he might have to hold his own against Roxy, like, actually hold his own. And, I mean, Roxy's a straight-up older girl. So, Ashibi, you know, he's 14, and if she's 16 and, you know, a lot taller than him, I don't think he's going to win that fight unless he's just a dope swordsman. But he doesn't seem like that, and that's why I like him. He's an underdog. He points at what needs to be destroyed, and Fabricant 100 goes to go destroy it. So, you know... Let's see what happens. If she screams so loud that people cannot hear anymore, um, Ashibi might get pissed off at that. You know, if people go deaf because of this, but I mean, at least they're alive, I guess you could argue. And I guess maybe Fabricant will argue. But for the most part, good stuff all around. This is exactly how I want this to just keep going. And I like, I like when fights take a whole chapter. I love it in One Piece. I love it in Hunter x Hunter. Full Metal Alchemist, they always had good fights, albeit a little fast, except for the last fights, those were amazing. And, um, you know, we don't need to bring up Dragon Ball, Dragon Ball Super. Those are just great fighting mangas, fighting shows in general. But what I like about Fabricant 100 is we get a little bit of everything. You get some mystery, you get some intrigue, you get some shounen, you get some dark plot lines, I think that's saying, but you know what I mean? You get it all in this. It doesn't seem like your typical shounen whatsoever. Already having to expl explore, like, metaphysical paths of thought and stuff like that are just, it's just so fun. It's so cool. I want to see Ashibi draw a line finally and be like, no, Fabricant 100, I can't work with you. Or, sorry, Fabricant, we can stay together, but I'm not giving you my body when I turn 18. I want to live. He needs to have a Robin moment where he wants to live at the end of the series. I am banking on that. That'll be my series prediction. That Ashibi doesn't want to give his body up at 18 because that would be such a crazy ending. But um, yeah, that's about it for the video. It's a great chapter. Please go and read it again and appreciate it more. Anyways, have a good night. Caffeinated review. Merch Hunter Ricky. You've been you. Have a great night, everyone. And if you made it to this part of the video, please like and subscribe to be part of the Merch Hunting Tribe. Like I always say, I really appreciate every like, view, and subscriber that I get. You guys make my world go round. Have a good night.